Mr. Chairman, I'm very pleased to yield to the Chairman of the South, South Asia and Middle East Subcommittee, a gentleman whom I just traveled to Pakistan with, uh, Mr. Ackerman, three minutes. The gentleman from New York is recognized for three minutes. Uh, I thank the Speaker. Uh, I rise in strong support of the legislation before us, and I want to thank Chairman Berman for allowing me to work closely with him on this bill, and more importantly, for his producing such an excellent piece of legislation. Some may be surprised that I am an enthusiastic supporter of this bill to assist Pakistan. Over the years, I have been unashamedly one of the most persistent and aggressive critics of Pakistan's government and of the previous administration's policies in dealing with it. And I remain deeply concerned about much of Islamabad's behavior, ranging from its cozy relations with native terrorist groups to its obsessive beliefs that India intends to devour Pakistan. None of Pakistan's governments have demonstrated a persuasive commitment to internal, policy, internal political or economic reform or anything approaching real acceptance of the rule of law. Pakistan has been at best an obstreperous partner on the subject of proliferation, and like many, I fail to understand what possible reason they have to justify the stonewalling we faced regarding the AQ Khan proliferation network. I continue to believe that Pakistan's interest in F-16 aircraft is akin to a fetish. I am, nevertheless, a strong supporter of the bill. Why? Very simply, it's time our partnership with Pakistan connects directly to the Pakistani people. Our previous strategy of depending wholly upon the government of Pakistan to fight a war most of its people detest is not sustainable and I believe contributed significantly to the political instability in that country. This bill sets the stage for the United States to work with Pakistan to promote long-term development and infrastructure projects in all areas of Pakistan to establish a real counterinsurgency and counterterrorism strategy, and to assure U.S. access to individuals suspected of engaging in nuclear proliferation. This legislation will help Pakistan gain control of its nuclear, of its undergoverned uh, areas and ensure accountability for all U.S. assistance to Pakistan. In addition to requiring the President to develop a real security strategy and regularly report back to Congress on the effectiveness of our military assistance, the Act prohibits such assistance until Pakistan demonstrates its commitment to shared security goals. There are also strong oversights and audit requirements for the State Department and USAID, and a requirement for the U.S. Controller General to report independently on the effectiveness of our security assistance. This bill is a tremendous step forward for us and our efforts to bring peace and stability to South Asia, and I would hope that every member would support this legislation. I thank the Chairman. I thank the Speaker and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New York yields back the balance of his time. I'm very pleased to yield, pleased to yield on the Republican substitute to the Chairman of the Subcommittee on the Middle East and South Asia, Vice Chair of the Committee, Mr. Ackerman, two minutes. Gentleman from New York is recognized for two minutes. Ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my Without objection. Mr. Speaker, the Royce Leighton substitute is not just a step back in policy, it's a step back in time. It attempts to reinstate the failed Bush-Cheney-Rumsfeld model for managing the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Under this, Congress gives the President a massive blank check and then walks away from its responsibility as a co-equal branch of government. The Ross Layton substitute strips out all policy from the bill. It has no provisions to encourage Pakistan to change its behavior. It has no provisions to ensure U.S. dollars are being effectively accounted for. It has no provisions for keeping Congress involved in the process. It has no guidance whatsoever for the President about how taxpayer dollars ought to be spent. This is not legislation. This is abdication. Is Pakistan cooperating with the U.S. to dismantle nuclear supplier networks? Apparently, it doesn't matter in the Republican substitute. Is Pakistan ending its support to extremist groups and closing terrorist camps in the Fatah? Judging by the Republican substitute, who cares? Is Pakistan working to prevent cross-border attacks on its neighbors and strengthening its counterterrorism laws? If the Republican substitute is any guide, in the words of uh, Jackie Mason, this is not my business. We've tried the minority approach. It is completely devoid of policy. It encourages abuse. It doesn't work, but it does have one advantage. It allows members of Congress to avoid any responsibility for the war in Afghanistan. Mr. Speaker, it's too late 
to go back to strategery. I yield back the balance of my chair. Gentleman yields back.